50 years and says like, this isn't gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be all right already. <laughs> Hi, my friend. All right, I'm gonna, I'll hold it. You'll hold it? <laughs> okay, well, uh, what's the, oh, should I ask you the question? Okay. How is voting immoral? Great question. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you three separate questions and I'm going to talk about the hidden violence behind voting in the state. Okay. okay. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve problems? Okay. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence oh, to solve no. problems? No. No, okay. <laughs> and violence defined as like placing a person in an involuntary position, right, okay. without their consent of choice, i.e. rape, murder, theft, assaults, right? Okay. So the second question will be is, with the exception of self-defense of yourself and other people, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Uh, yes, I would. Right? And self-defense is not violence, it's self-preservation. You have a right to protect yourself. Property rights begins with self-ownership, right? Okay. Owning our body, owning our actions, right? So the third question would be is, would you consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Yes. Yes. Okay, so there, we're almost there. So we're, that's pretty much it. So you just told me in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of non-violent solutions that you apply and use, right? And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we also want to solve problems. Okay. Uh, but the government, the state says the only way we can solve problems here is through voting. So we vote. And in effect, we're voting with our ideas to solve our problems here. We elect a politician. That politician, their only job, his or her only job is to legislate those ideas into laws. Right? Okay. And those laws are ideas that are then back and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You take marijuana laws, for example. If I were to smoke a, a plant, right, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, in which any point I refuse, in which any point I resist or don't agree with those ideas, I'm in with violence or something shot, murder. Right? Because the system only knows how to solve problems the one way, and that's through violence. And it's even funded through more violence. Because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have to give them your money. You have to give them your property. You have to give them your taxes. You have no freedom of choice. Because if you did, they wouldn't threaten you with a cage at the end of that. Right? They can send Wesley Snipes to jail for not paying their, his taxes. They can certainly send anyone else to jail for not paying their taxes. Right? For not giving up their property. Okay. Right? So that's, so that's the hidden violence behind the matrix, behind the state. Um, so the solution, the reason I'm out here today is really just to, to talk to people about that. To, well, to, I'm not saying I'm, I want to convince you, but just really just to uh, maybe here's a red pill sort of stuff. You know, let's t turn away from the state and let's turn to each other our own community, right? Let's unite our own community for values, right? For equality, for nonviolence. When you push these values forward, those values never go back. I don't know anyone today who advocates for slavery. You know, once we've all become abolitionists, eventually that term of meaning goes away. You know. Um, so, do you exactly. have, yeah. Do you have any questions? Or? Um, no, I don't. I really agree with your point. Um, it's very like the communist point of view. But today in America, people don't like that point of view. It's either you know Republican or Democratic. It's never you know. It's like a democracy. It's never communism. And I really agree with you. It separates us instead of uniting. You know, yes. uh, and, and so this is not a political position whatsoever. This is really to see that salvation will not come, you know, in a White House in D.C. Change does not start overseas. It starts at, at with ourselves first, right? It starts at home. It starts in our own community, you know. And then when, when you finally see the matrix for what it is, all you can do is just talk to other people about it, encourage them to talk to each other, right? That's the best form of self-defense against anyone would be aggression, right? When we're all united, you know, where are you going to go if you want aggression against any member of our community? No one's going to house you, feed you, clothe you. You know, don't disconnect from you on Facebook. You know, all your friends will disconnect from you, you know? Uh, your internet service provider will pay you $150 from, to disconnect from you, you know? Um, we don't have to wait for change. We don't have to wait years, you know? We can do it in one day just by talking to each other, you know? We don't have to wait, you know, people go out there, well, you know, my, uh, voting is my, my, uh, my voice. is so like, no, it's not a piece of paper, it's not your voice. A chat is not your voice, you know? And even then, even when they pull that curtain, they pull that lever and punch that chat and write their little voice on that piece of paper and they step out and people say, who do you vote for? People say, oh, how dare you? That's a personal issue. And then they slap the I voted sticker on the shirt. And they don't talk about it again for another four more years. Right? So this is just a freedom movement. It's a freedom movement against the idea that violence will set us free. And not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other. The violence we do to children. Right? You can't have exceptions. You have to go all the way with that. Right? Violence begets only more violence. And uh, so the freedom movement has already spread. There now, there's now a movement in New York, uh, Liberate Rochester. There's uh, Liberate Newcastle and Delaware. There's uh, my phone in my fingers. Liberate uh, uh, Rally in North Carolina and one in uh, Minnesota right now also. That is awesome. Um, so this, and so it's pretty much just, that's just it. It's just a simple message. There's no, um, there's nothing more than that, really. It's just a freedom movement that can take place wherever we are, right? We don't need protests. We don't need permits. We don't need camping gear for this. This can take place uh, on a sidewalk. Uh, at a, at a dining facility, at a cafe, or even in the privacy of your own home, right? The state can never stop. They can arrest us if we step on the, step on those uh, if we sit on those steps, right? 
They'll arrest you if you protest. They'll arrest you if you march chanting slogans and stuff like that. If you don't have a permit, you know, uh, if you occupy this uh, this park here, you know, they can arrest you. And they want you to do that, but they can't stop us from just simply talking to each other, right? And that's that's where I want to go with this. That's where I want to get back to learning to how to talk to each other, right? We're all misled to believe that the only thing that's protecting you and me are laws, right? Instead of uh, looking towards each other and realizing that because we're born into this, that's the culture, that puts the quote in culture, right? The idea that we can't unite, that we can't talk to each other, that we can't have a real community, you know? Um, so that's what Liberate RBA is, uh, is all about. <laughs> I love that. I'll definitely spread the message. Yeah? Oh, wait. We'll come this uh, Saturday. We're having a freedom gathering. Okay. Um, so we have a potluck and then a philosophical discussion and then an after party. The uh, party liberation front are going to be there. The uh, fire okay. spinning, fire mancers and all that stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so they're going to be there too. Uh, okay. My friend, he's a student here uh, studying music here. He's going to be the great guy. He can pick up anything and play it. That's um, so cool. So yeah, so I mean that's that's what I'm out here for. We need a philosophical revolution, right? A cultural revolution, a nonviolent revolution. You know, uh, violence will only replace the state with another kind of state. You know, you look you look at history, you look for patterns, you find that every single violent revolution always changed government with another kind of government, and people end up dying, right? In this movement, there's no risk of being arrested. There, no one needs to be injured. No one needs to die for this. Right, um, and I can't wait for change. My brother's a freshman now at uh, New Hampshire University, so I can't wait until he wants to uh, practice or experiment, you know, with marijuana or something to be dehumanized. You know, it's not about me anymore. You know, um, but yeah, definitely come. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, I definitely will. Yeah, Thank I'm Cal. Morgan. Morgan, pleasure, pl nice pleasure to meet you. <laughs> All right, great, Thank awesome. So this much. is my friend Asha. Hi. Hi. Behind the camera. <laughs> Yeah, but you can find out more. We have a lot of stuff on our website, too. Okay. Thank you so, very much. Absolutely. Take Bye. care. Good luck.